Come on in. My name is Rick Boots. Welcome to wood carving. Today I'd like to show you how to make one of my favorite Adirondack animals, the river otter. And this is a little fellow right here. These guys are very playful and it's a really neat shape to work with too. I've just used a bandsaw to rough out the blank and this is the shape I have to start with. The hardest thing I find about a project like this is trying to imagine where you get from a clunky shape like this to a sleek, streamlined, graceful otter like that. And one of the things I found very helpful is before you even put a tool to this wood, just to sort of close your eyes and try to imagine the shapes that you want in that wood. Just, you know, try to feel it with your hands and your mind's eye, the shapes and the contours and how the tail comes around over his foot and the paws bend around and the twist of the head. Try to see that as clearly as you can in your imagination first. Then you'll find that when you put them into the vise and start laying the tools on, you already kind of have a road map in your mind of just the shapes that you want to work with. It's a little tricky to do at first, but it comes easier with practice. And you'll find it saves you a lot of time. I'm going to use a number five gouge here uh, for roughing this guy out. And with a large carving like this, you can put them right in the bench dogs of the vise. And it's a little more efficient than holding them by hand. The first thing to do is just start and knock off all the corners and rough edges. And then it's just a matter of successively knocking off more and more angles until you get down to exactly the shape that you want. One of the best looks I had at an otter was late one winter over on a nearby lake. And there were three of these otters at the time. The ice was just starting to go out, and one of them had half a fish that he had caught and was playing around with on the ice. And the others two were chasing him around. It must have been a family grouping. And they were chasing each other around over this ice. And this one otter did the silliest thing I've ever seen an animal do. He would take and he'd run along on the ice. And it was kind of slushy. There's about a half an inch of slush on there. And he'd start running along on this ice. And he'd take his front feet and just kind of plop him down by his side and push his nose through the slush with his back feet and just go spraying all over him. And it was the funniest darn thing I'd ever seen. And he's just doing that by the hour. Otters are really very playful. And I think that's what makes them so endearing. There's an excellent book on otters one written by uh, Gavin Maxwell called Ring of Bright Water. And he talks about a pair of otters that he had in, uh, in England, I believe. And in his book, he said that one of the favorite tricks they had was the male would climb underneath his dresser and then take his back feet and push the dresser drawer out. And then the other otter would come and would get inside the dresser drawer and throw all the clothes out all over the floor. And he came to the conclusion that otters were the happiest when things were the most chaotic and confused around them. For making the feet here, what I'm going to do is take a gouge, fairly narrow gouge. I think I'll use a, a veiner. And just take and split through this section here where the feet go. Just take that off in little pieces. This is going to be going cross grain. Um, as usual, when I'm laying this out, I lay it out so the grain goes the length of the, uh, of the carving here. So the feet are going across the grain. So you have to be careful because this will split fairly easily. And you don't want to split out your otter foot. If that does happen, just take a little glue, a little white glue, and glue it back in place. Same thing with the paws here. I'm going to just take and separate those with a gouge. Just 
just split those out a bit. Now this is at the stage of the carving where I find it real exciting because all of a sudden you can start seeing the shape of the carving in the wood. And you can start seeing the shape of that otter is going to have. So you can just shape his feet down a bit here. One of the only natural enemies that otter have are humans. And it's kind of unfortunate in a way. Pesticides and things get washed into the water and it uh, kills the fish. Acid rain has taken a bit of a toll on the, the fish supply for the otters too and cut down on their food supply. They don't eat game fish. They find that the otters really, they like crayfish and they like the scavenger fish on the bottom, the things that people who are fishermen don't really get too excited about. So they don't really compete with people for fish. But unfortunately, they're, people are still allowed to trap them, even up in the Adirondacks. One year alone in America, over 29,000 otters were trapped and killed to make fur coats. And I don't know, it, it's, they're such cute little animals, it seems like such an incredible waste to have that happen. For carving the legs here, I'm going to just take and make a vertical stop cut and then come around like so. Speaking of otters, I had kind of a funny experience with one oh, just last summer. I like to go out and do some observing. I'll take the binoculars and my sketchbooks out and go out and study the wildlife and see what I can find to do carvings of and make sketches of them. Well, I went out to this place where there's a large rock overlooking a lake. and. I found that I really don't have much luck sneaking up on the animals. I find it better just to kind of sit there and wait for them to come by or wait for them to come to me. And if you sit in one place long enough, they don't notice you and they'll, loons will swim by or birds will come by that you never could get close to. Well, I couldn't find anything that afternoon. Everything was pretty quiet. So I more or less gave up for the afternoon and put my binoculars down and leaned back on this rock and I was laying there watching the, the clouds go by and just floating with the universe. And believe it or not, I saw this little motion off to my left side there, just a little, little flicker out of the corner of my eyes. And I very slowly turned my head, and here was this otter. And he had climbed out of the water, and he was climbing up you know, on the same rock ledge I was, about 15 feet away. And he was going to take an afternoon nap. I couldn't believe it. I, <laughs> maybe someone like Thoreau could come up with a, an eloquent, a philosophical way of talking about this experience. But I just found it thoroughly delightful to be sitting there in the sun on this rock in the afternoon with an otter dozing on the same rock, just kind of enjoying things. It's hard to describe, but it was really quite a sensation. Something a, a very peaceful afternoon. Very rare experience. Oh, something else I have to tell you that happened too when I was out there. There were some fishermen, and they must have been about half a mile or three quarters of a mile away. And you know how sound carries over a lake. And these guys were out there fishing and talking. And this fisherman said to the other, and I could just barely hear him. I wasn't listening in the conversation, but I couldn't miss it. And he says to the other guy, he says, Bill, I really have been impressed with your life. You don't smoke. You don't drink. You're a good family man. 
he really turned into one heck of a nice fellow. And the other guy said, well, thank you. I wish I could say the same about you. And <laughs> this other, I can't believe it, this other guy you know, thought about it for a minute, and he says, well, shucks, you could if you'd ever learned to lie as well as I have. <laughs> I can't believe it. Adirondack humor. Now, for carving the head, it's a little difficult to imagine anything in this lump of wood right now. But you just keep working with the general shapes and working around there, and pretty soon it'll come. Don't be in a hurry. Just kind of take your time and let it happen. And if you get lost in the shapes you're making here, if, you, if you're not sure where you're going, then once again, stop, close your eyes for a few minutes, imagine the shape that you're trying to make, and that'll serve as a guide for your hands. Something else that helps, too, while I'm thinking about it, let me just give you another tip. Draw a line down where the center part of that head is going to be. See, he's got a little twist in him. So you have to give it just a little bit extra thought. I'm going to draw a line down his back. And that'll help me visualize how his head is going to be twisted around. And once again, I'm just using the same old basic whittler's paring cut that we have been using all these weeks. See how versatile it is? You can use the same technique to do so many different types of things. Now I usually start my otter's head by thinking of it as being somewhat egg-shaped with a point going towards the nose. And when I look down on the top of the head, I just strive to get that egg shape in there. Now, after a while, you're going to have a carving that looks a little bit like, well, like this one here. Okay? And this isn't all that much farther than where we've been. I've taken and I've carved the profile of face first and worked out from in there. Remember, on these faces, always work with the profile first because that really establishes everything you need to work from. And then I was setting in an eye here earlier, and let me just show you how I did that. This one here, I just take a small gouge and just press that in there and scoop out that wood very carefully because this eyebrow here is going to be cross grain and that can split. Just keep working around there until you can fit the eye in. Okay, it needs to go just a little more yet. And these eyes are glass, they come clear, and I just paint the backs to match the color of the particular animal. And then I use the epoxy putty that we've talked about, mix up a little, and put it in there. And this one over here is one that I've pressed in already. Now the difference between the birds we've been doing in an animal like an otter <coughs> is that the eye isn't perfectly round. It's sort of oval shaped or almond shaped. Now what I've done here is I've just smeared that putty over there, all over the eye, and then it's just a simple matter to come back with your knife and just scrape that away until you get the desired shape. The eyes are very expressive in an animal like this. And it's one of those details, you don't want to rush it. The eyes give it so much expression. Anyway, just keep working that around until you get to the shape you want. Just take a slow and easy and just draw the eye shape right in there. Pretty soon, there he'll be looking right back at you. Isn't that something? These guys have so much life in them. So much. Now, for doing the mouth, 
Let me just find a V tool here. Use a small V tool like a small number three or a, a number six. While I'm at it, I'll take a handful over here. And take your small V tool and holding it in a pencil grip, just carve out around this line that we've drawn for the mouth. Draw it in pencil first to make sure you get the shape right. And then just take a small knife and pare away that down below. See the expression that gives them? What amazes me about these carvings is as you're working along, they, at a point they take on their own life. And to a certain extent, you can create the expression. But to an extent, the carving creates its own expression, too. I, you know, they just take on their own life. Now, if we're doing the paws, we can do exactly the same thing. Um, for undercutting this paw, what I've done is I've taken and just worked my knife underneath that wood there and carved it away. Now, you have to take this slowly, and you have to have your knife very sharp, because the only way you can get in there is by going against the grain. So you want to take that slow and easy. When you get that shape down to where you want it, then take a V tool, and after you've marked out the location of the paws, and otters, like people and everything else, they have five toes, take your V tool and you just incise a line partway between each one of these toes. all there is to it. Then, for the final detailing on your otter, what I suggest doing is using a wood burning pen for detailing in the fur. And this is a, a real stat box here and controls the amount of heat that goes to the pen tip. And then just take and texture in the fur. Otters have a very sleek, fine fur. So you want to use short strokes on this. Don't make them real long, like on a raccoon or a bobcat or a bear or something. Just real short, fine strokes here. Now, one other trick I'd like to show you. You can take and use your wood burning pen and use it to detail in the claws, too. And you can make, on some little areas here, you can make finer cuts than you could with a carving gouge. Because the wood is so fine there that a carving, any carving tool would tend to splinter the wood. Whereas you can use these to kind of melt that wood away. And that makes claws there. Just a little tip that you might find handy. It's the little details like that that add such a degree of realism. And there's his claws. Now you just take your wood burning pen and just texture in the entire fur on the rest of your carving, and you're ready for painting. I'm going to put this away for a minute here. Now the paint that I use on the otters, I generally use an acrylic paint. That's because it dries fast. And there's some things you can do that really give you a very fine degree of shading with it. In a way, you can almost work it like watercolors. Let me show you what I mean here. I've got 
some paint, some acrylic paint mixed up. Blow the chips away. Those chips make great durable bedding. Now the colors on an otter are fairly simple. I use a burnt umber thinned out with some white for the basic color. You could also use oil colors on this, but they'll tend to take a long time to dry. Besides, the acrylics have just a little bit of a shine to them, and it'll help make that fur look very sleek when you get done. Now I'm just going to take and oops, thin that out just a tad more, a little more white there. For doing this stage, it's better to err on the light side, because you can always darken a carving, but it's almost impossible to lighten it up. Okay, just take, and I'm just going to paint this whole thing here. So use a mixture of burnt umber and white for the color. Then the tummy tends to be um, a whitish color, so you just take and mix a little, or actually mix a little burnt umber with your white, and that'll give you the tummy color. Now, for simulating that fur texture, one of the things you can do is take and use a very thin wash. I'll move this palette over just a bit here. Use a very thin wash of this dark color. Now, see, how, see how thin I'm making that? I'm using just a tad bit of ivory black and the burnt umber here to make a dark brown mixture, and then I'm thinning that out with water until it's very transparent. And then I'm taking that dark wash and just painting in a shadow area between these claws. Very subtle, not, not making anything real, real elaborate here. Just very subtle. See, and that makes it look like there's a shadow down between these uh, toes. And that'll help give the fur, or your carving, a feeling of, of fur because you'll have a, a depth to it. Now, another thing you can do along the same lines is to take and take a little bit of white and a little bit of your umber. Remember that dry brushing technique we used the other day? We just take the paint and clean almost all of it right off. You can take and use that same technique with just a tiny bit of paint on your brush. And on the high spots of your carving, the places where it's going to catch and reflect the light, just take and put in a little bit of white. See, that? See what that does? It gives you the illusion that there's light reflecting off that fur. So what you have is highlights and shadow areas, and that gives that carving the feel of very soft, deep fur. You can see it more clearly on the other one over here. Okay, you'll notice on this guy how I've gone around and I've darkened this down into these shadow areas here, and it makes that fur look very fluffy. Same thing around these little rolls of fat. Otters, they're very sleek. They have a, a, a layer of fat over them. It keeps them insulated from the cold water. And I took a little tool and made some gouges here, and then just take and get a very thin wash and lay along there, and that gives those little rolls on the otter. You know, it gives it shape. It makes it look alive. The last detail you like to do with your otter is give him some whiskers. And for doing that, I've just taken an old bristle house painting brush and taken and trimmed off some of the hairs from it. And then you just take a needle and poke a little hole in there. Take your bristle and a pair of tweezers 
and glue it in there with a little bit of five minute epoxy. Don't do too many, about half a dozen whiskers on each side, and maybe three for the brow. It's really all you need. And there's your otter. Isn't that neat? I love it. They are such neat little animals. I think you'll enjoy this project. Give it a try sometime. Hey, next week, I'd like to show you something a little bit different. I'd like to show you how to take an antique molding plane and some carving gouges and make an example of a classic 19th century carved molding. Something I think you'll enjoy, and it's a lot of fun. Well, thanks for dropping by. I really enjoyed being with you again. And until next week, this is Rick Boots wishing you happy carving. How to Carve Wood, a book of projects and techniques by Rick Boots, is available by calling 1-800-950-WMHT. With more than 200 pages and over 400 photographs and illustrations, including patterns for some of the projects in the series, this companion guide presents important woodworking techniques. For your copy, call 1-800-950-WMHT. The cost is $17.95 plus handling. Please have your credit card ready when you call.